A person without permission starts digging a pit of mill versus rabbim, comes an axe, falls on top of his head, kills the digger, kills himself. And there so happens to be three people watching this, Dayanim, and they say on the spot, Chayev, right before the guy dies. Since this Psak Bezin is so strong, it's as if it's a Milvak Suva Bishtar, it's a strong lien on the estate, and the inheritors must pay the owner of the axe. If a person is on death row, he's being let out to be executed, and they had shechted his carbon chatos, carbon asham, we wait a few minutes for the kohanim to finish the avoida and sprinkle the blood on the mizbeach, so this individual should have a kapar. But what we don't do is we don't wait long enough to shech the animal to begin with, because that will just give the guy extra pain and discomfort, and we just kill him before we're able to shech his carbon. Says the Mishnah. If a woman is pregnant and she's being let out to be executed, we do not wait until she gives birth. Although, when it comes to monetary issues, the husband has a claim on the fetus. If somebody kills the fetus, they must pay the husband. So I might say that the husband could say, wait a minute, it's my baby, I don't want it to be killed. No, we kill the baby because the Torah says, umesu gam shneim. From the word gam, we learn that also the baby. From the word shneim, Rabbi Yoshe learns, that if two people had illicit relations and one of them was a cotton or a ktana, they both are saved from the death penalty. If the woman is already on the birthing stool and then they say, let's go out for execution, we let her give birth. Why? Because once she's ready to give birth, the baby becomes detached from her, so to speak, and it's not part of her body anymore and therefore the baby survives. According to Rashi, it's Dafka before the Gemara Din, according to Taisvis, even after Gemara Din. When we kill a pregnant woman, typically the baby dies before the mother. That is, the Gemara explains that the Malcham Abbas comes and injects a drop of poison, and that poison kills the baby first because the baby is a weaker individual than the mother. What we do is, though, since if the mother is being executed, the mother dies first, then we are concerned that she might give birth after her death and that will be a disgrace to her. So we kill the baby before we execute her by hitting her in the stomach. We be concerned if a mother dies on Shabbos, we're able for Pikuach Nefesh to be Michal Shabbos and grab a knife and run through Rosh Rabbim to perform an emergency surgery to extract the baby. Although sometimes we see, the Gemara says that you see the baby thrashing around, convulsing, that's only similar to a tail of a lizard that will convulse and has nothing to do with life because we know that the tail of a lizard doesn't have any life. So the, the convulsing is not signs of life, it's just a natural thing that happens after death. So therefore says the Gemara, if we say that Allah is that a woman who gives birth to a new, newborn, and then that woman dies, the newborn inherits the woman. Then the newborn dies, his brothers from his father's side inherit him. However, in our case, where the, it's still a fetus, a fetus does not inherit his mother, because even though the mother died eventually, the fetus cannot inherit its mother when it's dead in the cave. So therefore, it doesn't have the ability to pass over his mother's inheritance to his brothers. Says the Mishnah that the hair of a woman who dies, that was killed, was executed, is mutar bahana, you're allowed to use the hair, and the hair of an animal is asr bahana. So according to Rabbi Nachman and Yitzhak, the nafkamina is that a woman be, becomes asr through misa, through the death. And hair doesn't change anything when a person dies. So therefore, the hair is mutar. Whereas an animal doesn't become asr by death, the animal becomes also by the psak din. That means, once there's a gmar din, even if you go ahead and shak the animal, the animal is also by hana. According to Rav, a woman's hair is also by hana, just like a dead person. So what the Mishnah says, that the woman's hair is mutter, we're talking about a shaitl, we're talking about a pay of nachris, extensions, and that is only in a situation where the woman said, I want to give my hair to my daughter or to somebody else. In that case, She's saying that the hair is not an extension of herself, rather 
it's a separate entity, and therefore we're allowed to give it to her. The Gemara is misupak by a tzitkanis that's an irani dachas. Irani dachas is a city that's condemned to death because they all worshipped the Avedizar, but this woman did not worship the Avedizar. The halacha is, she must leave the city without anything, without any clothing, zero. The question is, if she has a shaitel hanging in her closet, is that shaitel considered part of her and it could be saved, or is considered like her belongings and it has to be burnt? Hadrun Allah, Hakom Arichin, we just finished the first parak in Erechin, now we're going to move on to the second parak. Says the Mishnah, a poor person that did Erechin, he said, Erki Olai, the minimum that he gives is one shekel, one selah. And once he gives that selah, he closes the case, and even if he becomes wealthy afterwards, he doesn't have to pay. If he didn't pay the whole thing, he paid half, let's say, he didn't close the case, and therefore, if he becomes wealthy, he must pay the entire thing. If a poor person has five sela, according to a mayor, he gives one sela, and according to Chachamim, he gives the entire five sela because it says in the Pasuk Hashir Tasik Yadai, it goes by how much he's able to afford, and since he could afford five, he must give five. Although Chachamim learned from the Pasuk Hashir Tasik Yadai that, it, that what the, we appraise the person that did the erichin, not the nerach, not the subject, but rather the person that did it, but still the Pasuk itself, the Pashup Shan in the Pasuk is that he has a, enough money or doesn't have enough money, and since he has five, he has to pay the entire thing. Have a wonderful day.